Hey, so here's a quickish explanation of how to get um, custom images on your dice and just a general explanation of how to make custom dice in the first place. So I've already made these um, pictures that I would like to put on a dice face. These are all PNG files with um, transparency. I don't think Windows shows it, but they are. Um, so they need to be in the right folder to start with. Um, on Windows, it will be in your documents, Sophie's dice, and then you will have a custom dice folder. This gets made, this folder gets made when you first open Sophie's dice. Um, so we just drop these in here. We can put them anywhere in there. If I wanted to put them inside this dice bag, I could. Um, where you put them doesn't really matter, but um, you can obviously organize it however you please. Um, the most important thing is just that when you place them in there, um, they won't appear inside the application until you reopen it. They are loaded at the, the opening of the app. So I'll open the app now and then you can see what we do next. Okay, so now we've opened the application, uh, we can start making our dice. Um, we'll get rid of those ones for now. Uh, we will add a new dice, click on the plus, and then click on the dice icon, which is the middle one. Um, we could make a new bag for it, but I think we'll just stick to customizing dice for now. Um, uh, first step is uh, choosing a shape. I want this to be um, a nice cube, a d6 shape, so that's what we're going to go with. Um, and I'm going to give it a name, this is my attack dice. Um, that's my plan for it. I'm not going to touch the colors for now, we're going to go straight into getting the images together. So um, let's change the displays to images for um, for four of the faces. Um, and that's, that's that. Um, so we will have, if we go, sorry, if I click on choose here to choose an image, um, we can scroll down and we can see that the um, images have actually been imported now. So I want um, a couple of hits. As you can see, the hit is there. The white parts of the image will get colored, the dark parts won't, and basically um, things that are kind of in between get in between colored. Um, <laughs> it's a bad explanation, I'm sorry. But um, that's how it is. The the faces get colored multiplica multiplicative multiplicatively multiplicatively which is probably the wrong word but whatever um, so two hits and two misses um, we will also have a critical hit there it is and we will have a uh, parry which is essentially a critical fail um, I'll change the size of these just so that they fit a little bit better um, if I want to, I can spin them so that they're uh, more interesting, but um, I'm going to keep that normal for now. Um, we'll change the color that the selected face appears. I want it to be a bit more green. Uh, no, maybe blue. I, I like blue. I like blue. And you can change this by face, of course, if we want the, um, the critical hit to be a different color. We can specify that right here. So we can say the critical hit is a red. Um, but other faces will still use the normal highlight color. Um, and obviously you can individually set the size of faces and um, their own spin, which would be different to the spin of other faces. Um, and if you wanted a sound effect for on a critical hit, what do we want? Um, the crowd can cheer. Yes! Okay. So, um... So that affects the display of the dice. Oh, well, well, since we're doing the display, let's set the color as well. Let's let's pick a nice kind of greenish. I want kind of a murky, a murky green. Um, oh yes, yes. I like. See, I, I like a look like this. It's uh, it's murky, but it's it it works. So. That's how a dice looks. Um, but if we um, if we roll it now, let's save the changes and we roll our attack dice. We can see that it's the result is coming up as a number. So we want to right click and edit and change the values. So um, each one wants to be a string value. That's that's a text value. Um, so this one is hit. This one is also hit. This one is miss, another miss, 
critical and carried. Um, we save the changes now. And if we roll it this time, you can see our results are listed um, as, as text values, as strings, and it even clumps together the hits. So we've got a parried, a miss, and two hits. So if I was, you know, trying to roll for four different attacks to see if they hit, um, I've got um, my first two attacks, the enemy parries them, um, but then I get a hit in, and then the enemy misses. So, um, so you can do things like that. And that is the basics of how you make custom dice, really. There's um, other details. Oh! Oh, we got our criticals, which plays the sound of hex. Um, there are other things that we can do, of course, um, such as change the material of the dice. Um, so if we want a nice metallic dice or um, plastic, I mean, plastic's a, a good dice material. It's, it's you'll, you'll no, not have a bad time with plastic usually. You can change the size if you feel like your dice is um, looking a bit smaller in relation to other ones. Um, you can change the font, although we're not using any um, font on these since every face has got an image on it. Um, also, you can adjust the uh, fairness. Um, perfectly fair is the default, but if you wanted to behave like a real dice, which is always slightly a little bit unfair, um, just like a tiny bit, um, you can enable realistic bias. Um, but that's it. That's that's the explanation of um, how to customize your dice. Um, I hope that was useful.